Good evening. We welcome you to our regularly scheduled board meeting for the Pasco School District Board of Directors. Uh, we'll call the meeting to order 630. For your information, we did have a study session at 430 this afternoon where we talked about a work priority management tool for the superintendent and for the district and uh, to help us as a board make sure that we're not overloading our superintendent. So we'll begin our meeting tonight with a flag salute. We welcome this uh, Principal Deidre Holmberg and students from Franklin STEM Elementary. Good evening, Board President Christensen, Superintendent Whitney, and members of the board. Thank you so much for having us. Uh, this evening, I'm so proud to highlight one of the many great extracurricular programs offered at Frank Rosalind Franklin STEM Elementary. Uh, Destination Imagination is an extracurricular activity aimed to teach students uh, the creative process and empower them with the skills needed to succeed in an ever-changing world, which aligns perfectly with PASCO's vision for STEM education, which you will hear after the pledge, uh, which we do every day after the pledge at Franklin. Um, in our first year of DI at Franklin, we had 11 teams of seven students in grades one through six. So this was a uh, great, huge activity all of a sudden. We didn't expect to place at all since it was our first year. Many experienced teams did not place at all. But with me tonight, I have uh, six graders from very different backgrounds, very different social groups that came together to place third at the regional competition held at Richland High School last month. Um, many, like I said, many experienced schools didn't place at all, so uh, we're thrilled to have these guys here. Uh, we have with us tonight their coach, Andriana Flores. She's also our music teacher at Franklin, and also uh, Mrs. Uh, Inez Capatillo, the assistant principal at Franklin. She was also a DI coach as well. So I'm going to allow the students to come up and introduce themselves and their parents, and parents, if you wouldn't mind, remain standing the whole time, and we'll do the pledge, and then our PASCO's vision for STEM education. Hello, my name is Malachi Lewis, and I'm here tonight with my mother, Jessica Lewis. Hi, my name is Anissa Garza, and I'm here with my family. <laughs> my name is Emma Gonzalez, I'm here with my mom, Tara. My name is Cassidy Gelhaus, I'm here tonight with my mom, Jessica. My name is Sean Maris, and I'm here tonight with my mom, Amy. Hello, my name is McCordy Kabolik. I'm here tonight with my mom and my dad, Brent and Heather. Hi, my name is Jackson Motz. I'm here tonight with my dad and my stepdad, Brian and Dan Holiday. And now with that being said, I'll ask you to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will ignite in our students and staff a passion for learning, a commitment to innovative thinking, and a desire to transform the global community. Thanks, guys. Just stay up here and I'm going to come down. Thank you, students, for coming tonight. We have a little token of appreciation that we want to present to you. Thank you, parents, for coming and supporting your students. Thank you very much. That's a little pin you can put on your lanyard. <clears throat> so, Ms. Dun Mrs. Dunnigan, yes. you want to call roll for us, please? Mr. Christensen? Present. Ms. Lankin? Present. Mr. Lehrman? 
Present. Ms. Bella? Present. Dr. Richardson? Present. Ms. Craig? Present. Ms. Kittles? Present. Ms. Stowell? Excused. Very good, thank you, Mrs. Dunnigan. All right, so agenda review. So I did want to acknowledge and thank Ms. Dunnigan for being here tonight to cover for Jenny uh, Richardson, who is on vacation this week for us. So thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Dunnigan, for being here. Um, I also wanted to call the board's attention to an addition to the packet under consent agenda item um, 7I, uh, overnight student travel, Chiwana school DECA every 15 minutes, um, was a, a, an addition is denoted on your uh, packet in red. All right, thank you. <clears throat> So this is the uh, portion of the audience where we're going to open it up for audience comments. Anybody wanting to address the board is free to do so at this time. We'll um, please limit your remarks to two minutes if you have anything to say. The microphone is open. Anybody wanting to address the board? Final call? Thank you. Your opportunity has passed. <laughs> so approval of the minutes, could we get a motion? Mr. President, I move to approve the regular meeting minutes of March 27, 2018. Can we get a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the regular meeting minutes of March 27, 2018. Those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion passes. So consent agenda number seven. <clears throat> Looks like we have personnel, warrants, social studies curriculum materials adoption, 2018-19 board meeting calendar, elementary 16 site prep work, educational specifications for Stevens Middle School replacement, Educational specifications for middle school number four. Overnight student travel, Chiwana High Deaf Education Program to attend Deaf to Deaf Conference in Auburn, Washington. And overnight student travel, Chiwana High School DECA every 15 minutes, shift into safety program preparations in Benton County Morgue field trip. So that is our consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Mr. President, I move to approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. So it's been moved and seconded that we approve the consent agenda as amended. Any discussion? Seeing none, could we get a roll call, Mrs. Dunnigan? Yes. Or not roll call. Consent? Roll call. Yes. Ms. Lampkin? Yes. Mr. Lehrman? Yes. Ms. Phillips? Yes. Dr. Richardson? Yes. Thank you. Consent agenda passes. Looks like we uh, we don't have any action items tonight, so we'll move to reports. Looks like we have a report on long-term facilities planning. Dr. Susana Reyes. Good evening. President Christensen, members of the board, and Superintendent Whitney. This report is a continuation in a series of reports related to the long-term facilities management planning process, and it will focus on the timeline for the work. Per board established operational expectations, the board has requested the development of a long-term plan that establishes priorities for construction, renovation, and or replacement and maintenance projects. The final plan will outline recommended strategies and actions to address overcrowding, enhance safety and security, and improve conditions of school buildings and facilities. This is a timeline of the expected activities. Review and analysis of the listed components will be incorporated into the process and include those listed here, school capacities, enrollment projections, geographic information systems data analysis, school size standards, school siting guidelines, boundary studies, prioritization of facility needs, and financial analysis.
The next steps, now that we have a timeline in place, um, include a study session that is scheduled for April 24th for the board to explore and develop parameters or guiding principles for the boundary studies for the elementary and middle levels. Additionally, a report on the capital facilities plan will be presented and will include a determination of capacity and enrollment projections as discussed at the previous study session. And as you know, the capital facilities plan, which is different than the long-term plan, is required by the city of Pasco in order for the district to collect school impact fees. And an update of this plan is due to the city in May. So we'll be reviewing that in, at the end of the month at the next um, board meeting and study session. <clears throat> Thank you. That does conclude my report. It's very brief. Thank you, Dr. Reyes. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Did the um, did the com are the community builders have they been meeting lately? No, we have not yet met. We are working to establish the smaller technical working group, and I've solicited feedback from the community builder group via email regarding interest on the part of one or um, one community builder member group from each of the um, respective areas of our district, east, west, and central. And uh, once we have the group established, the smaller group will establish a meeting a calendar for meetings. And um, when they have had an opportunity to review some of this initial data closely, then we'll move forward with um, meeting with the community builders group to provide them with either a, a uh, an opportunity to further review or maybe begin developing some additional questions and forecasting potential actions or strategies. Are they aware of um, this kind of timeline and schedule right here? Do you guys keep in touch via email so that they know or? The plan was to present this to the school board and then depending on the results of today's report, then I will follow up and send them a copy of it and share with them where we are in the process. Thank you for setting this parameter. I think it's good to have, uh, so February, March of next year, it's kind of our goal deadline. I know a lot of people have asked that, you know, when are we gonna have this plan in place where it's like, okay, here's our long-term plan. So uh, looking at this, February, March 2019, we could say, okay, by that time we were planning on having a, a plan that the board approves that would be our long-term facilities plan. Is that accurate? That, that is the plan, and um, it, it may appear somewhat maybe uh, aggressive in terms of how the, you know, the timeline looks as far as having it done in, according to this, in, in less than a year. Um, so it really depends on um, how the process develops and the kinds of questions that may come up and so forth. So if we need to shift and extend it, of course, we'll be bringing you regular updates for that, but this is where we're hoping to go and have it completed by then. Okay, great. And I just had one question about the boundary study and kind of, mm -hmm. if, I'm wondering if you can elaborate more on that or, uh, you know, the goal was establishing parameters, our next study session for, mm -hmm. for boundary study. I, I just wonder if you can elaborate on that. And also, it, it says elementary and middle schools, but really the, the one that we hear the most about is our high school boundaries. And I, this was probably before Dr. Reyes was here, so I don't know if Ms. Whitney or Mr. Nunnermaker can comment on this, but that's, that's the one where we get the majority of our questions are our high school boundaries. And so I'm wondering why that's not there and, and exactly what that will entail as far as us trying to set some parameters for boundaries. Okay. So I can speak to the boundary activities that we expect on, that's outlined here in the timeline. We have two, obviously two new elementary schools coming online and two middle schools. And so the, the goal will be to establish boundaries for those schools. And um, what I plan to do is establish a district committee to begin working on that process in May. Um, but the uh, board's work around the guiding principles of that work will inform how, how we move forward with the committee. And so in, 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 on April 24th, when we meet with you, I will share a presentation regarding um, the process of boundaries and engage in a 
discussion, conversation with you about what's important to our community from your perspective as board members and to give you an opportunity to um, offer up some guide, guiding principles or parameters that you would expect that the committee who works on it will then use to guide their work. So then we'll establish regular meetings. That district committee will, of course, include community members, but also we plan to have community forums and so forth. Um, so that's, I still need to flesh that out a bit. And it will actually occur kind of as, on its own, separate from the smaller technical working group and the, and the community builders group, because it's, a, it's an activity that can occur kind of parallel to the overall process. So it'll be its, its own sort of unique part of this, uh, of this overall project. Great. And lastly, just the, so the elementary, not the 16, but 17, so that everyone's on the same page, and I believe this has been mentioned at a board meeting publicly, but we've received lots of um, feedback and questions about that school and some interest in having it be an all dual language school. Um, some have suggested that we make Maya become an all dual language school, uh, just stay there and have that 17 um, be a regular typical elementary school. So just a heads up for in preparation for that study session, that's something that we'll probably need to discuss as well as that's been on the mind of many people in the community. Okay. Uh, are you able, so you have the technical, the smaller technical working group, you have the community builders, you have district staff. Um, are you able to show on this um, schedule here which parties are involved in which activities? We certainly can. So that, and when you send it out to the community builders group, they know which activities they're going to participate in, and the technical steering group knows, and the board can kind of see which activities are which stakeholders and... Okay, thank yes. you. Can you share with us a little bit of what the, the difference between the technical working group and the community builders would be? The smaller technical working group will, their task will be to meet more regularly, probably t twice a month, and um, they will be tasked with uh, really working through the data and information on a very deep level, and then um, have um, discussions and dialogue around what that information means for the long-term plan, and they will um, provide then either recommendations or um, summaries of some of that information and data for the community builders group so that they can then generate the, the, the overall proposal or review proposals that the technical working group might develop and um, help sort of um, have them provide that input. The technical working group will have more um, members on the team who are, you know, district staff or um, experts in, in, in specific um, topics that might be related to long-term facilities planning, such as real estate um, um, business partners or um, financial um, representatives who can provide us with sort of a deeper opportunity to look at the information and then use that to share with the community builders group so they would be they would meet certainly more frequently certainly during this process it would meet more, more frequently they would do more number crunching and data analysis analysis than we would expect our community builders to right. do and then i think so so I know there's been a couple of WASDA presentations that I've been to where they, they have a committee, basically, that's constantly studying anticipated growth, yeah. capacity, um, and just certainly not meeting twice a month, mm -hmm. but they, they keep a pretty good finger on the pulse of what's happening in the community, where the need is, where, where they expect it's going to increase, and help guide the district in that way is that something that you're expecting would happen here that this group would continue or is it something that we're going to just establish for the duration of establishing this plan the technical working group could continue to be an ongoing established um, team of people who who could do who could meet more infrequently once the you know long-term plan is developed so yes we can certainly um, we can certainly explore right. that, and I'm sure that it would be a great way right. to go. 
I like the idea of having a, a group of profes professionals that know real estate that can kind of help us understand that, you know, your community is going to grow and here's where it looks like it's growing. Uh, financial people who understand financing, construction people or, or building people who understand buildings that, that would help guide us in that way. Even some district staff that know what the requirements are when it comes to education. I think it's critical that we stay ahead of this and, and have somebody who's constantly watching the, the projected growth and the capacity of our buildings and helping guide us in that way. I, so I, I think that would be great. We need the community builders to help us understand what the community desires are as far as education goes and as far as buildings go. And, and, uh, but I, and I would expect that as you're talking, that group's a bigger group. They're not as invested time-wise in right. crunching numbers and coming and doing lots of analysis. But is that kind of what you're right. yes. anticipating? Yes. Okay. As far as boundaries go, now, just uh, going back to the study session that we're expecting in our next board meeting. It, it seems to me like this is something that, so I don't know if we're in a hurry to do this. It doesn't sound like we are. I think it goes out several months there, but <coughs> so what's it been? It's more than 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago when we were looking at boundaries for Chiawana High School. I know there was some, there was two criteria in particular that were, that, that the community, and I, I say community because I think there was meetings done to gather input on that that the community said. Um, it looks like you're asking us as a board to develop some criteria for setting these boundaries. And I'm not sure that's something I'm comfortable with, with just my own knowledge and, and the contacts I have. Is there any effort going to be made to get community input on what would be important when it comes to these boundaries? Or are we just looking at five board members and uh, three student representatives to come up with some some criteria for these boundaries? Well, the parameters or guiding principles that, that you would help us develop would be more global <coughs> parameters that will um, allow for the committee to begin the work with um, a, a level of guidance that is reflective of, um, you know, the members of the community that represent them. And then certainly the community, the committee can add to those, can explore or ask questions around um, why maybe a particular guiding principle was selected. So it's, it's open, but at the same time, it's a way to sort of begin the process and have something to begin with that is, um, has been established, you know, by our yeah. district. Yeah. And then to Mr. So, Christensen, um, Ms. Whitney has asked us that the um, student super council, oh, super council, you are Ooh, super, I like that. Yeah. The super council. <laughs> the super council. <laughs> but she's asked us about our opinion on the lines. So it might not be as many students as you want, not hundreds, but it is a broader perspective on the line. So mm -hmm. that is something to also consider. That's good. You guys are ahead of us. I, and if we, so our study session's at 4.30, I mean, I, if we advertise, I don't know how many people can be here at 4.30, but it would be great to have community input or even, and I certainly don't want to have another meeting, but if we had a, um, what have we called those before when we've gone out to the community and we've had a forum, a forum <laughs> where we've said, look, we're, we want your input on boundaries. Please come to Franklin STEM Elementary School and tell us what you think. But... And uh, the or maybe I'm making more of this than it really needs to be. The, the not, no, not necessarily. This initial meeting or this initial step is really a way for us to establish sort of a, a baseline, mm -hmm. and, and it'll help guide our next steps. Certainly, community input is always welcome, and they can participate in that conversation with you. But really, it's just a way to, it's an opportunity for you to offer um, your guidance as a school board for the process with some broad parameters or broad guiding principles and, and um, to sort of yeah. get this process started. Additional work will continue after that and will involve 
district staff and yeah. community members and so forth. So it's not as, it's just a sort of a beginning step. So what concerns me about this, and, and I know there are people who felt like the board when it came to Chiawana said, look, here's what we want. And there was people who felt like that was a board mandate. And I, I don't think that was the case. I think there was a lot of community information gathered to, or community input gathered to help establish what those parameters would be when the high school boundaries were set. And I, I, I don't want the same thing happening where somebody says, well, that's just what the board said we should do. And well, I'd rather have an input from a broader group than just five of us. And I'm glad we've got active students. That, that's, their input is valuable in this. But. I think what our challenge would be, because John Morgan left binders full of and Sherry was here, the work that he did to try and drum up community interest in that and kind of what the binders of information show is that a lot of community input was solicited and not a lot of people came and provided input before the fact. There were, so um, that would be our challenge is to, to get that input before the fact instead of uh, people criticizing after the fact. And, and that's on, on the board and the district to drum up that interest, but hopefully uh, we'd have a lot of willing participants at this time. You know, I, th I think I think so too. I mean, if we put parameters on, I think they need to be very, very, very broad. I don't think they need to be narrow. And, um, <clears throat> but when this was, when the Chiawana boundaries were made probably over 10 years ago, um, this school district looked vastly different. Um, there's probably like 40% or so more students now. Um, at least 30, at least. Yeah. Um, 40, and and they're and they're not people who have lived here their whole lives with, you know, with lots of tradition and lots of. It, it's just a different group of people, and so I feel like we might have, um, and we have a big interest. Um, my concern, you know, I, I think a forum is going to be great, but I think we also need to limit it to. I want the boundary right here. I think we need to limit it also to bound, or to overarching boundaries. This is this is what we want our boundaries to look at, not this is where we want our boundaries to be. And um, but I do really like the idea of having them help set some of the parameters the the community. So in board board parameters that you might typically look like when you, you start to kind of look into these things, boards typically say things like, we want to maximize walkers. We want the um, boundary lines to fall on natural community division, you know, in like a natural street, not like in a weird off street. I mean, those are the typical very high level board parameters that board that you'll typically see when you like start looking around in how do other <coughs> districts handle boundary scenarios so it's certainly a, a very high level jumping off point with the expectation or the the very deep intention of engaging our community through that process in a community group community forums where people are allowed to give input i mean we could even explore some other options like online survey or the we we did a couple of very informal facebook surveys that were successful so um, we definitely hear your desire to have broad community input the extent that's possible and I do um, want to echo um, board president Lehrman's um, comment is the challenge with these kind of processes people don't know it's going to impact them until they see it and know it's going to impact them so you know the extent to which we can get a lot of information out so that folks can anticipate that um, will be will be the goal for us as part of this group, are we able to involve the city more? That's been another concern in the past that it seems like the city does something or this development's plan and then we kind of are always catching up, you know, they announce this five to 8,000 home potential development. Is there a way we can move forward more integrated in our planning so that we're not, the city does this and then the school district has to scramble to try to find some land and a, for a school that's gonna fit that need after the fact? I think that was one of the real draws of the technical working group is that it is a group that can you can maintain for a longer period of time. Um, you know, while the long-term facilities management planning is happening, they may meet more frequently, but after it's over and you have a plan and they're just monitoring it, they meet on an annual basis, maybe quarterly, et cetera, and you have that professional expertise at the table to create the kind of synergy that you're, you're 
um, suggesting, and we have a good example of that in Kennewick School District that has a very similar structure that has been highly successful for them. Um, so again, it's a, a deeper level of expertise, technical, they tend to stay together for a longer period of time, um, where your community builder group that really looks at it, all the recommendations and the information through the lens of a community member and a patron, they may stay together for a short period of time, complete the task of building a plan, and then disband. And then when you need them back together for a project, they come back together. So the idea is to provide multiple opportunities for people to engage based on their interest, expertise, and commitment, the time commitment that people can make. I mean, which, which varies kind of depending on what, what stakeholder group you're in. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. On, um, I didn't think about that, but you probably did. Having somebody from the city on our technical working group that that can give us their input, so we can share things going forward. Yes. Um, also, Dr. Richardson, you talk about the city. So in a month, we're going to be going to the city and asking them to um, approve our capital. Not 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 approve, but basically to continue collecting impact fees and and uh, we've talked before about having that relationship with the city and and things that we can do there so I, I think that might be a good topic for further discussion the, in uh, but but yes we need to work closer with the city so that we know what they're planning and they know what our needs are so. and we happen to have a city employee here with us tonight Maybe you can talk to the city plan. Uh, preferably, would be the city planner, right? Which who is kind of leads. I don't know all the intricacies city of the planner, city government. City manager, there's, there's a city planner, right. city governor. So, that so would be the, the ideal things. person. Yeah. So, Susana, Randy, and I meet with the city officials that you're talking about on a monthly basis, and and they've been very willing to engage and collaborate with us. And so, I don't see any issue or barrier to them participating. I'm not making a commitment, but I'm just saying <laughs> they're great collaborators. <laughs> The other thing on capacity, so we'll be talking about capacity next next uh, study session. Will we have numbers then for yes. the schools at that point? Yes. Okay, good. Okay, is there any further discussion on this topic? Anybody? So we're going to thank you, Dr. Reyes. I don't. I think that concludes that. Is there anybody in the audience who wants to make any comments on our long-term facilities planning? Hi, my name is Heather Kubalik. I'm a parent of students in Pasco. Um, I just want to say I like the idea of getting community input now, not once boundary lines are out there. Um, just asking what the priority, I mean, I'm, I'm in my head, I can already give you my list of what my priority would be for drawing the boundaries. Not what they are, but here's what you need to be looking at. And I think a lot of parents also have their priorities. So if you open that up and got that out before you start making the actual lines, it, hopefully it would uh, decrease in the criticism that comes once the lines are drawn. So I like that idea. Yeah, anything we can do to minimize the pain is. <laughs> <laughs> and it welcome. is a painful process, and it will be regardless of the level of community input. And we recognize that. But I do believe in exactly what you said. The more we get those, guiding, those guidelines from parents and, and we try to follow those guidelines, the better off we're going to be. I might have missed this, but is there an estimated date of when we want to say this, these are the lines, like these are the boundaries, or are we just kind of going with the flow? <laughs> oh, no, we have a plan. I believe Dr. Reyes's schedule said December at the latest of 19. Um, our, our goal certainly, because you have to remember there's parents who are, are looking for their children to go to a new school that <laughs> August, so even December starts to feel a little like it's raising anxiety levels, so that would be the very latest in which we would want to have those boundaries defined. Because you'd be opening a new school in August of that of 19. Yeah, I see Mrs. Omberg over there. I don't think she had near that uh, amount of time to, yeah, yes. <laughs> it's, it's not, we we want to give our principals more, more time to have that up front, so that, that's a great plan. Yes, thank you, Mrs. Kabalik, for your input so just just as on the high school boundaries 
I want to say that they had they worked on that for six eight months at least and probably had 15 meetings maybe 20 meetings uh, with the community uh, they had a group that met regularly and had I mean they had many meetings and many plans and worked on that continually trying to come up with a plan so it wasn't just the board saying this is what it's going to be they had the community brought many plans and worked on it very hard and brought it to the board as this is what we think the boundaries should be so we the board gave them guidelines that, that that we wanted the schools to be equal and not just draw a line from here to here you know right straight down the the ones off of 20th street go to this school and the the the, the other school go the other way they wanted it to be e equality in the schools so that's how they that's how they came up with it yeah i, I know we've had this discussion before but it's worth repeating that as Mrs. Phillips said, the community was different back then. I mean, it was all, there was one high school. It was all one community. Um, it's changed. Right. At, at that time, there was, you know, it, we didn't want an east and a west high school. We didn't want a rich and a poor high school. We didn't want a Caucasian and Latino high school. We wanted it equal. And those were the two parameters that were given. We want a, a socioeconomic balance and a... And a um, a racial balance for lack of a better term and so I as Mrs. Lincoln said they looked at lots of different ways to do the boundaries and in the end that's where it ended up is uh, one central school and then the two outside ends went to Chiawana and people who have come in since then and even now we look at that and we go that why are we busing kids even back then why are we busing kids from East Pasco all the way over to West Pasco to high school but it was because of those it was because of those priorities that were established not by the board but by the community that that it ended up that way so it 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 looks it looks strange now and and not very efficient but it met the it met the goals that were set at that time maybe we can add because it keeps coming up we can add a frequently asked question miss whitney as to how the binder or how the boundaries were created and then it could be real brief and say that there there's documented binders showing the process if people are interested in what was done because we get the question and we're probably going to start getting it more this exact question why aren't you looking at high school boundaries well frequently asked question when we open a new school we look at boundaries if you're interested in the process stop by the district office and you can look at look at the <laughs> <laughs> look at what happened and how we got to where we were it was different when those decisions were made 10 11 years ago so and just something to keep in mind and a little student opinion. So I live in East Pasco, but I go to Chiawana High School, which tends to be a little bit inconvenient. I speed most of the time getting there, but I love my school. I wouldn't trade it. I've been to Pasco High, and it's a good school, but I wouldn't trade going there. And so, no. <laughs> but um, that's something to think about when you consider boundaries certain schools are fit for certain students you know and it's just the environment that i feel when i walk in there that's my school and i'm feel, sure vanessa feels the same about pasqua high so that's something to consider and you know that might be another overarching boundary in the past we've had very strict rules on on um who can go to what school if they live outside or inside of the boundaries and um, we've already relaxed those a little bit and to see how it works and we it would be it would be great to have community on input on how rigid they want those rules about you know about crossing over for kids that have those different needs so I really like the su both suggestions about community input in advance and the frequently asked questions I just want to be very clear that the scope of boundaries we're talking about for this process are elementary and middle school boundaries right. we can document that in a frequently yeah. asked question no, 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 I understand. Yeah. I, I just, the other thing I want to be really clear about is this is in a very aggressive timeline from May to December in, in, an, in the effort to recognize that changing boundaries for families is, is a very anxiety evoking process. So the broader the scope of things that we add to this conversation, like um, uh, enrollment exemptions, et cetera, 
the the extent to which that timeline can get um, pushed out. So I just want us to be very mindful of this is a pretty aggressive process to honor our community and, and get them information early and just be very cautious about, you know, adding other focuses or priorities kind of simultaneously to try to get those processes done. So. Okay, any other discussion on boundaries or on the long-term facilities plan? If not, thank you, Dr. Reyes. Okay, so. So those of you who uh, have been here to our school board meetings before will have noticed that we've made a little change in the format. We have finished our action items. We took care of the uh, consent agenda. We've had a report and now we're going to move into kind of a more informal discussion portion of our meeting with the board. Some of the topics that the board is wanting to, to discuss that aren't necessarily reports, but but more discussion format. So with that, we are moving to agenda item number 10, where we will talk about state of the school review. We have Mrs. Whitney and Mrs. Phillips to do that presentation for us. So thank you very much, Board President Christensen. It is my pleasure to be here and co-presenting with um, fellow board member Amy Phillips, Vice President. Um, and what we're prepared to talk about tonight is a, a mechanism or a concept called State of the School Review. And this is specifically a model that's used by Everett Public Schools. And it's a, it's a set of work that we, um, Amy, learned about and shared with me as a result of the last WASDA conference. So our goal tonight is just to share some information with the board about why this kind of approach was important to the District of Everett. Um, from their perspective and what they report is that it really integrated school improvement efforts in governing board, board governance decisions and illuminated the impact of board policy, action, and advocacy. So in essence, really bridging the distance between the board dais and the student desk for, for just to create kind of an illustration for you. So, so what are we really talking about here? We're talking about some collaboratively developed formative presentations that are based on reflective practices and would include information like comprehensive data, school improvement action items, and key indicators. And these presentations would be developed with, um, by high-performing teams, including teacher leaders and principals. Um, and they would be presented in a 65-minute-ish give or take, a uh, presentation made again by those administrators and school leaders with an opportunity for 10 minutes. Um, and again, this is the model that Everett used for the people that attended to ask questions. The attendees to these meetings were district staff, um, potentially building principal, other building principals, a couple of board member representatives. Um, and uh, again, some key district staff. But two board members attended each of the school presentations. So for example, in our, our district, we have 22 schools. You would split those two schools up amongst the board, and two of you would go to each of 22 meetings. Um, so there is in front of you a, uh, a handout that looks like this. Again, this is uh, Everett Public Schools work where it outlines basically what I just talked about in terms of um, why they felt like these state of review school reviews were important. And again, it was just a really an effort to connect the school improvement planning process, those focuses that were identified within that process at the building level to a couple of board members as representatives to the whole board hearing and listening to the approaches that schools were using and also allowing schools and principals to ha make offers of support to both board members and district staff. Um, so with that, I'm going to turn the discussion part over to Amy, who has some additional information to share with the board. <clears throat> So part of the interest in this is, is the ability to hear from a lot more of our schools where um, we've, we've tried doing um, some different things, um, uh, splitting up the schools in thirds so we can get a report 
from every school every every or every a third of the schools every year and so there's so there was we've just tried and then getting different data and and getting the same data from all of the schools so, and um, and we've tried these data bytes to help us to know where the school is at and the schools are at and what they're doing and when I went to this um, thing at WASDA with Everett, it was one of the most powerful um, meetings I had ever been to because it really hit on, to me, it felt like everything that we needed as a, as a school district. And things, and what I loved about it is, as in all changes, some, they said initially the principals and the teachers were like, okay, wait a minute, is this gonna, you know, how is this going to be? What is this going to look like? And they said, you know, now that they were 10 years or 12 years into it, I can't remember. This was um, in November. They, um, Everett said that the, te the, the principals love it. The schools love it. Um, they, they said sometimes only one board member can show up to these things. And they get very upset that only one board member showed up. They really like to have the board members there. Um, this is kind of the key page to me that really go what goes on in these meetings at schools. These 65 meetings, minute meetings are very defined, and I love that. They have they don't just show high school data; they show the high school data and the year before, and um, and they encourage people from other um, from other schools to um, that that lower grade to come up so that so that there's some collaboration there. Um, they we. In doing this, the same data comes from every school. So every single high school and every single middle school and every single elementary school will, will present the same set of data. I love how they started out. The, and this is, I feel, was very key as well. Everything's done with an attitude of gratitude. And that was a very important piece that Everett really, um, really, it do, and it doesn't say that any, anywhere in here but that they really um, said was very important to the process and for to set, to set the appropriate environment for the meeting. Um, schools come in and, and they present things. They're grateful for what they have and they present what they need. We're grateful for what, for what they have done and, and present needs. So we are ho hoping that it's a really powerful thing for all of us and things that can help streamline work for both the high schools and and the district so that things become very normal so that we can really focus on these outrageous outcomes and and really propel our students forward they've had incredible success in their school district incredible success simply by narrowing um i don't know by combining the focus combining efforts and 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 i just and so there were so many great things. Um, the list of data in number one is for, um, it, you know, it goes into AP, it goes into PSAT, SAT. We, we really get to delve into data like we can't do in a board meeting. And it's not a beat up session, it's a this is where we're at session, this is where we're going session. Part two is this is what we're doing with this data. This is what we're, what we're, um, what we're gonna do and what we, and where we're going. And then um, part three talks about their high, their high performance teams, what they're doing, how they're doing it, um, how they're going about teacher planning. And then part, um, part four is all about supporting the needs of the school. Um, the schools show needs and how, and, how they, and how they affect student achievement. And, and then the school district tries to meet those needs. And I love that too. They made a big deal of it. They actually put posters all over the boardroom of each individual school's ask. And as they hit those asks from each individual school, they um, put a check mark on them or anyway, or you know, done. And then, and then at that point, that's when they, the school acknowledges those, those supportive things and then they say, and this is something else that could really help us be successful as a school. So it's, so it's a really collaborative thing to really help our kids, help our kids succeed. Um, the other thing that they in, did in the middle of this packet, this is, um, 
that you board members can see. This is their schedule of when each of these, they, they put these schedules out far in advance. And, and so you know, sometimes they set the schedule, they actually have makeup schedules because sometimes they change for various reasons. So they know in advance. They also assign two schools, excuse me, we would assign, um, what is it, four schools to every board member. They split the schools up between board members so that board members can more focus on those schools. So when we get so many invitations from all over, and it's hard sometimes to know, okay, I could go to that, but I could go to this and this and this, and what's a priority? How do I balance my family and my work and everything else and do this? With only four schools, you can focus more on, okay, this is my school. I'm gonna try to go to their STEM night. I'm gonna go try to go, and, and so this also helps reduce the work of the board and I feel make it more effective as they create a real relationship with the four schools that are in their stewardship. So there were some really powerful things that came from this. Um, it could really simplify the, the data bytes that haven't been quite as effective as, as I, I would like, not because, not for lack of trying, but, but because I don't know if it was the right vehicle to get us where we need. And I think this is probably the right vehicle that we need to get us where we need. I'm presenting to the audience instead of the board, so I apologize for that, because I'm used to looking at the audience. <laughs> but um, so this is where we're at. Um, I've, I've talked to Mrs. Whitney and staff, and, and it, it would be a shift in the work, not an addition to work. Um, so, that, so that some of the, the requirements, we would drop the school reports at this level, we would, we would drop the data bytes that would not have us dropping any, like the SBAC that we might get, or, or um, you know, star data, whatever, across the board, across the district. We're not gonna lack on that data, but we're gonna get very specific data at each and every school, and the board can receive copies from every school, even the ones that they don't attend. So does anyone have any questions to that or feelings on going to this, uh, this kind of a situation more than you know, what we're currently doing? I, I had a question um, more about, not about attendance. Um, did they purposely hold these meetings so that they didn't have community members coming to this during the day, during the working day? Was that a conscious decision or was that what worked out best for staff or did they talk about it? Oh my goodness, it was a while ago. Um, I, I don't, this, it really wasn't like a community. I mean like this is the kind of data that we can put on our data dashboard, yeah. but it, this it's is kind of a parent involved. I mean, it's something that I, as a parent, would be interested in attending at my kids' home school to understand what the needs are, where we're at, what they're telling the district staff and the school board. But then the attendance is really small, and I was just wondering if they explicitly stated there was an intent in that, or was it just a this is what worked for the staff, so we did it in the early morning or end of the school day? You know, Scott, this, the purpose of this isn't like community input, this is what we feel you need to do, this is what, what um, the, the purpose of this is really, is, is really getting, um, getting down to that level, that, that data level, that, that request level. And um, yeah, that's why we have the data board, so that parents can be aware of, of how their school's doing in different areas and, and what they're doing. But the specific goals and the specific things that teachers are doing for planning and all of those, those are really getting into the nitty gritty of things and, and really something that should probably be a smaller group um, just because the, of the nature of, of what the meeting is. I imagine that's why it's small. I, I, I wouldn't recommend opening these to, to a huge community group because I think we might lose the, lose the effectiveness this isn't, this isn't a show, this is a collaborative effort between um, working partners. Um, and, and the data that will come out of here will speak for itself, for parents and, and individuals. Yeah. And I guess is, I'd, oh, cool. a counterpoint would be, when we get this data in a board setting, it's not a show, but some people show up because they would like to see the comprehensive data. And if we do it with all school reports in the board setting so the public's not invited and we move it to this more private setting then there's not chances 
not that everyone's going to want to take the chance, but there's not chances for parents to come and, and listen to the more in-depth look at their kid's school. Where would that chance be if we did away with it at the board meeting and went to this small group? Where's the parents' chance to come as a stakeholder? Where's a stakeholder's chance? Right now, their chance is every, once every three years, we get very different data from different schools in the first couple that we've tried. And to me, it hasn't been nearly as informative as I had hoped it would be. And sometimes you get these shell-shocked you know, individuals presenting that are concerned. I think a more intimate environment to really get down and to, to really go through each individual aspect. Um, this is an hour and five minute meeting just delving into everything. It, uh, they also talk about teacher groups and, and how these teacher groups work. I just don't feel like that's something that, um, you know, that's like, you're, you're an engineer, you're gonna go build this building and you want everybody, you wanna have the whole community telling you how exactly to build that building, how to do it. I just don't feel like that is the community's responsibility. What is the community's responsibility is, okay, this is a community building, this is what we want it to serve, this is what we want it look, to look like and this is how we want it, how much we want it to cost and this is how, and, and those things are very important and, and we will have that upper level data on a data dash dashboard and the, the teachers will and the parents will be able to see that at a much better and much easier way than they I feel like they have access to it now right now we don't really have a vehicle to do that for the teacher parents and I think it would change the whole nature of what this the purpose of this if we open it to the community and this is an excellent time slide example to go off of but we Keep in mind that we can't adapt it to Pasco High, well, Pasco High, Pasco School District needs. Maybe in the future we can try this just as we've tried the new agenda. And if, you know, things change, parents want to be more involved in the meeting itself, we can always adapt it. This is an, ex is an example to go off because this we're starting from the base. So, Or, or we can adapt it to <coughs> something like the freshman orientation and have some data presented there. There are lots of ways we could extend some of this information, but some of the information, you know, that that is more sensitive can be left in, in a, a building setting. Thank you for presenting this information. I think it's a, a great idea. I, I think we, we all agree we have this desire to have more information and, and we want like real information. This is how we're doing. This is where we need to improve. Um, as I reviewed it, I, I kind of had the same thoughts as Mr. Lehrman. You know, this seems like something I would love to go to to my kids' school. Each of the schools that my kids, I would love to go and see what, how things are going, what, what's it like. So to me, this is something that, that the community would very much like to attend, but they weren't included in the attendees. Also, as a, I looked at the schedule, and they have about the same number of schools as we do, 23, 25 schools. Uh, with two board members going to each one, that's about 45 to 50, so we'd each have to go to about 10, uh, and I there's no way I could do that because these are during the day. You know, I typically schedule visits during lunch or um, outside of the school day. I do, I, I totally agree, and I think we've been trying to get more information, and I personally really like the school report idea. It just, we haven't executed it great yet, but if we have about 23, 24 board meetings a year, that's the perfect number. I think we should get a school report at every board meeting. It should be standardized, like you've mentioned, that it should be the same information. This is the information we want to review. And that's going to become much easier now with OSPI uh, providing so much more information, essentially through their tools that we are hoping are going to align with uh, all districts, I think, are hoping this, that it'll be something that can be very collaborative and the same information that they're sharing and posting are things that we want to know and the information that we're providing to them is what we can provide on our website and, and things like that should be shared, uh, I feel like, at a school report, at a board meeting. Uh, every board meeting we should have one that would be less time, maybe 20 minutes, 30 minutes, hitting the high points, but the same points so that if you have a student at Frost, then you come to that board meeting where they're talking about Frost, and you're going to learn a lot and be really committed to that and see the people and, and rub shoulders with other people at that school, and that becomes a really a big highlight of that board meeting where people from that school attend. Uh, so I, I, would much, I, I would love to see that. We've kind of got it started. I think um, 
sometimes we're too prone to kind of jump to the flavor of the week. And I think this is a challenge we all have with WASDA. You know, we go and get these great ideas and some of them may be easy to implement, like the live streaming. To me, that's like, oh, that's a great idea. I think we could do that. It's pretty easy to set up. Let's do it. Something like this is, you know, dramatic change, which I think is great that, how, that they do this. But I think it would be challenging for me. And I'd like to know what's going on at all the schools. Like you said, they could provide a report that I could read, and that's better than nothing for sure. But I would love to see it be something where we just, uh, every year, one board meeting, one school, that school, everyone at that school is notified on Class Dojo or through however, everyone at that school knows that you're gonna, we're going to be hearing a presentation. We want honest transparent information, what's going well, what are your struggles, what are you working on, similar data for all schools so that there's no like focusing on these obscure things that make your school look really good. Like this just we just want to see what what is really happening and be able to compare apples to apples. Um, so that that's I would be in favor of that and and really uh, emphasizing some of the things that you mentioned but making it more of a consistent school report every year. Uh, a side note, I've just about finished. I think there's two things we're talking about. We're talking about getting reports from schools, and then there's being familiar with the schools, the staff, the teachers, the principals. And so to me, those are kind of two separate things that as a board member, we need to be familiar with uh, the staff, students, teachers, parents, administration throughout our district because we make, we vote and make decisions that affect the entire district. So it worries me a little bit if we focus each of us on, J say, just four or five schools and then we come and vote on something that affects the whole district, I worry that that waters down our, our knowledge and investment and awareness of all the schools. And for that reason, I feel like we should uh, have regular um, visits, meeting the people and being at the schools and just feeling, and this is like, seems like you'd meet in a conference room with those 10 people talking about data and you wouldn't, wouldn't really get that school visit component of it, you're just getting the data. Um, but those are my thoughts. How would you, um, if you limited these to 20 minutes and you did one every single meeting, we're trying to make these meetings a little bit shorter so that they're easier for staff, so that they're easier on, on, um, on us, quite frankly. So putting a school visit in every single one so that we have, um, because we have what, 22 meetings a year, so we'd have to probably double up maybe on one and in the future on three, four, or five. So. Part of the purpose of this is to help keep these meetings short. I think so, and so that's one thing. Um, I also think sometimes the depth of data is lacking. The depth of what we want to know as a board is often missing. Um, this could give us a very comprehensive um, look into a school and, and a very warm type of feeling and support that we just can't give them as a board. How would you? How could you overcome some of those issues with the 20 minute you know, presentation, nervous principal, only one principal, not a whole team giving a presentation and giving various presentations? Do you not, is the value not there for the more in depth or how do you feel that goes? Yeah, no, I think the in-depth is good. And I don't think it has to be the principal. It can be the assistant principal. They work as a team. They can involve teachers and uh, I think uh, along with the presentation, you could have a more in-depth, uh, like you said, a document, email, these are the data we want, that we could have that information that we can look into, but you don't necessarily have to present all 30 data points that we're looking for. Um, I think as far as board meeting length, one thing we had talked about was like moving the executive session between like study session and board meeting that I thought we were going to do, and I, I think that will shorten our length that we're here a lot, and, and that would be something I would propose or that we had discussed to make the meeting shorter, at least the night for us shorter. Um, and yeah, in the future, you, we could adjust it if you have too many schools, you could do two. I mean, some of our schools are small. I mean, we have the Early Learning Center, we have New Horizons, they're uh, much less students or specialized uh, type programs. Um, but those are some of the modifications. I like the idea of having similar data for all schools, but they can put their spin on it and have multiple presenters, but, and then we're provided with some sort of data, document, information that goes into a little bit more depth that we can review and maybe that becomes publicly available as well. I mean, it's a lot of this is going to be publicly available anyways based on the OSPI and legislative changes. Yeah, well, I think we will, in doing this, I think we would miss out on some things. Principals, assistant principals, superintendent, two board members, a deputy associate, as an assistant superintendent, one to two cabinet members, 
one to two elementary school teachers at the elementary level, two to three teachers at the middle and high school level, and the curriculum specialists. Principals are encouraged to invite their feeder school colleagues. You know, having something this intimate, this in-depth, and this knowledgeable is, I, I feel, it, you're just, you're gonna get 10 minutes of this at a board meeting at most, and, and I worry we just, you know, of all the things that I feel like could really propel our outrageous outcomes forward, I feel like this is. This has been tried, it's been tested. At WASDA, we don't always see things that have been tried and tested with clear data that, that directly ties to the results of something, and that's where we're at with this one. That's, and that's partly why this spoke to me because I want our kids performing at their abilities, and we're not there yet, and I feel like this can get us there. Mr. Lehrman, Ms. Lankin, do you have any comments? I guess I, I agree with some, uh, some of what Dr. Richardson said, is that I think my view would be skewed if I got an hour of information from a couple schools and said, okay, everybody else take care of all the rest of the schools. I, I do like the in-depth look, but why couldn't we, why couldn't each school create this 65 minute presentation and we get it in a Friday update and they can still come or, or give us the package of information we can look at it in our own time and they can still come for 15 or 20 minutes once a year if that's what we want to do or schools can come every other, every other year if that's what we decide because I think there's value in being able to make an elevator speech or a 10, 15 or 20 minute speech um, and still give you the backup package with the extensive data that's the same across all schools, you know, the same, same suite of data, and we would still be able to review it. I don't know that we need to sit down for 65 minutes. I mean, it'd be great if we could all go to every single school for 65 minutes, but I don't, I don't have the time to do that right now. And I, again, I feel if I only went to a small pocket of that, my overall perception would be a little bit skewed. We don't usually make decisions, though, hitting one school against another. And sometimes an overall knowledge of a little bit of every school isn't as powerful as an in-depth knowledge of three or four schools. And the fact that we would get the exact same data with each one in a report to each individual board member, we might really be able to understand how each school works. Um, because we already understand the data from the different schools that we go to. And you know how much more powerful that data is given live rather than reading it. So getting the live version and then getting the written version, it's gonna be pretty easy to marry those together and really understand what that data means because we've already got received the, the, the verbal and the in-depth um, that, we, that we just, we're not going to be able to get. You know, I suppose we could take this and and have them you know, do this in each of the schools and then have each of the schools give a short presentation that really just puts the cap on this. You know, This is the data was presented or the stuff that's the easiest to, to explain because some of it is, is difficult even for us to understand and we have been doing this a lot longer. And, but, but that also defeats the purpose of trying to shorten our board members, but board meetings, but if it's that valuable to the public, or even, you know, maybe once a year, the, each school could have a, you know, a presentation to the public on what, how they're doing and what they're doing. Those are ways to do what you and Dr. Richardson want on a public level, while we still get into this in-depth, really kind of intimate level with all of the schools where we understand the schools better, they understand us better, and we're really collaborative and supportive. Would each year uh, the board members get the same four schools or would they rotate and get different schools? You know, that's up for discussion and a board, you know, I'm in my fifth year, um, so is Dr. Richardson and, um, and not, excuse me, Dr. Richardson, so is Mr. Christensen and Mr. Um, Lehrman. So, and, and Mrs. Lincoln, what is going on a lot more years than that, I think over 10. So it might give you more intimate knowledge if you just trade through the schools each year. And perhaps it can be changed to do it so that they can do it over the lunch hour for some of our working people so that we can get more to, the, to more of these or even after school. I'm sure there can be accommodations made so that board members can be present. And like I said, if only one can be present, then, then um, you know, I'm teaching school right now and I, I would, 
I, this would be a priority to, me, priority to me over a lot of the things that I would miss over instead because this is where I want to live anyway. So. And I understand that the hour and 15 minutes is a bit of um, an inconvenience in your schedule because you do have families, you do have jobs, but thinking about this as data, as every um, public school district, as data and something that's worked already, maybe it's something that we could try because even though that is a little bit inconvenient, the goal in the long run could be better than the inconvenience now. I am extremely concerned about the load that we put on this current staff. When I suggested this, it was well received because it encompassed certain needs that we already have and, and it overlapped so many areas that would really help to, to make it easier in a lot of ways to, um, to, to facilitate things. So I got the impression that this wouldn't be a huge extra load. It would actually facilitate things that we're already currently doing that kind of need to be tied together and this would be a great way to do that. Mrs. Lincoln, do you have any Well, I, you know, I just think that uh, if we want to have presentations, um, we could all always use part of our, um, our uh, board workshop time to have presentations. You know, it doesn't have to be at a board meeting if we're worried about extending our board time. The worst part is getting 23 65-minute presentations into well, our Well, I'm not saying schedule. that they have to be 65 oh. minutes. Yes, but we, you know, if we did these 65-minute presentations at schools and then had a brief meeting, we could even have maybe three at a, at a, um, at a board meeting, you know, at a, what do you call it, a study session. But it does bother me to cut down to only, you can only go to, uh, not that only go, but you're, you're restricting yourself really to being, you're, you're only, you're required to visit only four schools. I don't think we're required. I, don't, I yeah. know you're not saying required yeah. to, but you're, you know, those are your schools and. If I'm invited by somebody at Whittier to come read to some first I graders know. and I, that Whittier is not my elementary school, there is nothing that says you can't do that. You're absolutely welcome that. to do that. Right now, I struggle to get to 23 schools with my, my family, with my work schedule, with everything I'm doing. I really struggle to. So to me, this was, I, I just, I have the feeling that, you know, a light dust over is not as effective as a deeper delve. And, and so having a deeper delve and more less would be better than a light dust over. And I even feel like I might have a deeper delve in all of the schools because this data will be replicated through every school and it will be easy to understand. And again, the rotation that Vanessa suggested, maybe if you had the four, your four schools um, for your year, and then she said she's going on her fifth year, Miss Lincoln, you're going on your 10th. By that time, let's say you're here for five years, you got through 20 of the 23 schools. So you would get the opportunity to go to each school. You might not get the opportunity to look deep into every school's data, but you have to think about it. that's 23 schools. How deep could you really get into it? Well, if you went to eight schools every year, you would cover all of them in three years. So you would still have like that deeper, more intimate knowledge of three schools every, you know, all of the schools every three years. It could be difficult for schedules. We don't necessarily have to have two board members. It, we could have just one at each of the things, at, the, at each of the meetings. We could just get reports after the meeting's over. There's lots of different ways we can do it. If we really don't want to separate the schools between board members to allow that deeper, we don't have to do that and we can still accomplish this, this what I feel is a really valuable um, matrix of some really um, powerful collaborative work. I personally like this. I, I think uh, I like the extended session where we go, the, the idea of going to the school, we're on their terms, on their turf. Uh, they get an opportunity to show their school to board members. Uh, I mean, I would certainly like to know their perspective on it, but I like the idea of, of spending more time there. Certainly this is we don't have to do exactly whatever it's done. We're developing this. We can develop our own program if we want 75 minutes or 90 minutes or whatever we want. We can, 
we can uh, schedule it that way. We could do we could do evenings. We could do during the day. I mean, whatever works. I, I know it's going to be a challenge and a sacrifice, but personally, I would rather go to the school, spend more time with in-depth information from the principals and the and the staff at that school. The I like the idea of assigning schools. I mean, it, so we had in our study session today, we had uh, if you've got two or three goals, you're going to accomplish two or three goals. If you have, I don't know the numbers, five to ten, you're going to accomplish one or two. If you have more than that, you're going to get zero. And I, I'll be honest, that's about what my attendance at schools has been this year. Is I've not been to very many, and it's just... I would rather say, you know, uh, Mr. Christensen, these are the five schools that, were your, that, that you were assigned to. You need to attend all of theirs and uh, attend their presentations. That doesn't mean that I can't go to other schools if I want, but, but we know that every school has a board member assigned that, that should, if they can, should be to those presentations. And as a board member, I would go to the four or five to which I am assigned, and then I would go to four or five others, and I'm covering nearly half the schools in the district. Again, I recognize that's a that's a commitment, that especially if these are scheduled during the day. As far as attendees go, I like the idea of having it in the in the home school where parents, whoever interested people could come. Uh, the format, again, that's that's hasn't been established yet, but as we develop this, we can do whatever works. I, I mean, we've got a couple of parents here that have expressed interest, I think, in being there, and, and I think that's a worthwhile thing. And I don't think the principal should feel intimidated by standing in front of the parents in their school and, and presenting on that. And again, it's, it's, not a, it's not something where we would where we're there to critique them or be critical of them, it's to find out what's going on and if they need help, what can we as a board do? I think that would be more effective than having them come and stand at the lectern there and, and make a 20 minute presentation. And quite honestly, I'd rather sit an hour and a half, take an hour and a half out of my day and go to their school than to sit 20 additional minutes in a board meeting. So I, I personally like this. I, for me, this works well. I, I understand it's a commitment in time, but, but I, think, uh, I think this would, we would hear from every school every year in depth. And as Ms. Kiros has suggested, it would, it, would be, it would make sense that we rotate through schools and so we're not getting the same information from the same school every year. So. Any additional? Any additional discussion? Board members? Not to belabor this, so I'll keep it brief, but you know, we had a discussion a year or two ago about making it so we didn't have to visit all schools, and the plan was to have two-thirds of the school be visited per year and the other third get a board report. And so I don't know if anyone followed that. I, I was okay with that. I would already set when I got elected that I would visit every school every year. So I've done that for three years. I just stuck with it. And so what I feel like I missed, though, is some of the data that I want to get more of. But again, so if you want to do this, that's fine, and I'll, I'll do my best to make it to... Now, now really, if you're going to have two board members, you have 10 schools. Now, if you just want one board member at these, then it's five schools, and that's, uh, I mean... More doable. More doable, for sure, um, and that's fine, and if, if the, I would, would do my best to do that. But again, I, I, I worry that too much, we just kind of go with the flavor of the week. Again, we didn't... We had decided a year ago and, and set a, a calendar that, okay, each month, these are the two or three schools. These schools should expect, you know, maybe some board members will visit those schools. The other third of the schools that year will give a board report. And the follow through on that was not good, uh, you know. And, and, and I, I, I just continued on my own schedule because I already had a schedule of each year, these are the schools I visit throughout the month so that I could get all schools in a year, which I've done for three years. So again, I, I just feel that you're, you know, we can organize and plan and prepare and discuss, and uh, but in the end, we just have to go do. And so, uh, I mean, if this is how everyone wants to do it, I'll do my best to, to do this model. But I think, like I said, we all agree we want more information. So however we get that, 
I don't think is as essential as that we get the information. I like, I agree with this is, if we're going to do something like this, I, I think you invite the school. You make it a big thing. If, if you're going to be honest, and I, I want to know what's happened at my kid's school, I would absolutely make the time to go to this, block off my schedule at work so I could be there for my kids' at school, and I know a lot of other people would as well. So this, it, it seems more like it would fit in if we had talked also about going to district board representatives. Uh, we were, that's still kind of in the process that we we're going to look at. To me, that fits more in with that if we're going to assign schools and we had three board members, say one from the Central East, one from Lower West, one from Upper West, well then that makes a little bit more sense to me, assigning schools as it is right now. Most of us live in the West, so that becomes a little bit tricky to assign schools that are far away from where you live since we, many of us live close together. So I, I see that as a complication. Uh, it seems to fit in much better if we go to a district-based model where there's, say, two, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, but you know, if, if, say, we assign three districts and then two at large, uh, then that, that it seems to fit more into that model. But again, those are the thoughts that I have. Yeah, if, it, if we had that model, it probably would more restrict us to making sure we go to those, those specific schools that we represent. With this, I do like the rotating and being able to hear in depth from each of the schools. Um, I, I also respect the flavor of the month. I'm tired of the flavor of the month easier. Also, I don't feel like I have been a board member that comes up with, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. Um, and, and so the reason this appealed to me is because it married so well with what we were already asking district to do. And it just got the more of the information that we need rather than little bits all through the year in one setting, much more in depth and much more particular to one school. And not just hearing from the principal. We're hearing from the principal. We're hearing from team leads. We're hearing from teachers doing, um, you know, that are doing their PLCs really well. We're hearing from, from this, this team. And we see what's happening in schools at that level. This isn't a thing. You can see the setup. It's not a board telling the school what to do. It's an informative session for the school. But I, I understand your commitment to the community and going to every school, and I applaud you for that. I have not been able to do that. I was very religious in trying to get to all the schools this fall, and it was very difficult, and I got behind very quickly trying to make it to two schools um, every single um, month as well, and making those, you know, making my schedule work with the principal's schedule because. Um, my, the, talking to the principals, they really wanted me to call them before I just dropped in. And so it, it became a, a very labored event. This, I don't have to schedule it. I can plan for it. Um, I get to show up for it. And, and, and so partly that helps me because it's so much easier for me to do that. Something that times the planning and scheduling is much harder than showing up. Okay, so We've had some discussion. Do we, uh, uh, any, <laughs> oh, well, you, you can. Okay. Yeah, come on back. So it's, uh, I think, what What would you recommend going forward, Amy? Do you have a, a no, you, you can come in. So okay. We'll just discuss here, it's not a, so we've talked about this, is there, do we want to table it? Do we want to? Uh, one of the things I would be interested in is to know maybe what principals, school administrators feel would be most effective for them. So, and I'm not asking for that tonight, but if we can. Our school administrators. Yes, mm -hmm. principals. Um, do they have any feelings one way or the other? Any preference one way or the other? on something like this again I, I think we're split as a board so we <coughs> I can I can certainly touch base with our principal supervisors and principals the other thing I don't know if it I, I I would offer to make any kind of contact the board would want with Everett Public Schools should should you think should there be questions you'd like me to ask I don't have to do that but I would offer that as a support as well I personally would love to know what they feel like would be the differences if they did invite the public to these meetings rather than just the more intimate group. Um, 
at these meetings, so I'd love to see what they say there because I'm not opposed to one or the other. I just want these meetings to be as powerful as they can. Um, par I think it's, you know, I think we do need to make a decision whether or not we go forward with the school reports as presented or whether we go forth with, um, with these, you know, these, we need to do one or the other. And, um, and right now, since neither one, since one is in its infancy and hasn't been as successful as we would have liked it to be, I think it's a great opportunity to try this. It is different, but it, but it so marries with the Outrageous Outcome initiative that this board has, has um, been behind. So, um, you know, once, you know, it's something that we could try for a couple of years and say it's not meeting our needs and we can go back to these or we can try to do reports from these, um, you know, or, and then we, if, if we're not going to do this, I feel like we need to discuss on how to get more of the data that would come from a report like this because I think we all um, are lacking that and would like that. So, board members, is there any other information that would... Well, I would like to have this, just this sheet presented to the, to the principals and see what they think about it. Um, and I don't think that having um, parents and the public um, at this meeting is, I don't think that we would get as much information. And I don't think that the teachers would, or the principals and that would be as forthcoming with it. Because I think for what we're asking, and what this is all about is. Uh, well, I think that's why you set the standard. These, yeah. are, these are the 10 data points we want to see so that there's, we're able to compare schools and, and so they're not just picking out, right. you know, cherry picking the, the positive things. We, these are, this is the most important data and this is what the information we want at each school. So no matter how we do that, we need to get that information somehow. But I think that, that we should let them look at it and then, and then see what their, how their, what their input is on it and then discuss it. So one of the things maybe you could ask, and, or maybe you know, Amy, but it, it, it talks about attendance and then it talks audience. When I hear audience, there's people there that are not participants, they're there listening. And I, it's not clear, are they inviting other people or, or do they mean attendees? I'm, I'm happy to call and ask Can those questions ask? if, okay. Amy, if you need me to do a little research on your behalf. Yeah. No, uh, what? Oh, sorry. Well, I, I, yeah, I'd be curious to know, and if there are audience, meaning community members, parents, whoever, are they, do they feel like that? How does that work for them? Just kind of get the a other question program. that I heard asked, you know, is where could parent, where would, if not here, where would parents get the chance to, to, to hear this information, maybe they have a separate mechanism by which this is shared. So I can also ask that question. If you can see where it says that um, a library or large room, large enough participants to have space to refer to their data notebooks. Um, sometimes these could be presented in, in um, so that we get the information as data. We can bring our laptops. We can go over this information and see it like, like that. Um, from what I understood, the audience would be the district staff and the audience would be the, the board members and the audience would be the participating, um, the participating, the, excuse me, the other schools that send, um, you know, the eighth grade and, and then the high school would send the ninth grade representative down so that, so that they can help more collaboratively throughout the schools. That's the audience. We, we're not like active participants in this. We are recipients of this information and this collaboration so we would be the audience I just want to clarify too that any barrier in implementation of the school reports has absolutely not been our principals our principals have been prepared and ready the challenge has been getting board business done and also providing study session time for our principals to do the presentations we have media agendas I don't feel like there's been a throwaway study session um, we, you know, there's just a lot of deep board work that needs to happen. And so I just want to recognize our principals have been 100% willing to do this. It's really just been a mechanism of prioritizing which important work. 
And I'm sorry yes, if I thank you. I, no, you I don't, didn't, I don't Amy. I just wanted to clarify. Yes, I, I, I. Thanks for the clarification. I think we've, we've talked about this for, uh, we did this at the beginning of the school year, right? And we've had one so far, and it's not because, it's not because they're right. not willing. No, and they and they're ready and they're ready to go, and and they've been very generous and flexible when we've had to slide schedules, et cetera, and. You know, we've just had some meaty, meaty decisions yeah. to make as a district and a board. Yeah, and we're not done. So <laughs> another, so. another thing we could do is, okay, there's going to be some set of data that, that's presented here. We could define it and ask for them to give us. I know that it's better to get it from the horse's mouth, but say that we're thinking of implementing this, you know, within the next year, or six months, or whatever it is, and actually get like four or five of these from different schools and just send it to the board and let us look at it or have a study session and go over it. But to go through a big implementation of this process, there's going to be some kind of learning curve. So, I mean, if, if this data is available and we know what these presentations are going to look like, we should be getting it now and start to look through the format so that we can define what would be presented. And I, I'd be up for that, you know. If, oh, if we said six, if we if we said we want six or seven of these first, just sent to us to start looking through, then we can define all of this. But I, I don't think we are ready to implement this anytime soon. What What is nice is I kind of feel like we have some of that. There's been data that we're like, we want this information on highly capable. We want this information on AP. We want this information on special needs. We want this information on the ESPA. This is, and you know, we want this information for the outrageous outcomes. So there's lots of things that we've already said in some in some of our board meetings that we want the information. Yeah. You know, so I, I absolutely, you know, we don't have to do exactly what they what um, Everett did, and absolutely we we could make that. The the problem too. I this is another thing that I ask staff because I am very very and and you know this. I've been very verbal about it. I'm very worried about the weight that has been put on. I'm very worried about the board members saying jump and they say the how high. Weight? So the what? What did you say? The, the weight, weight been... the heaviness. Oh, okay. And so when I asked about this, I was I was assured that it would be it would be doable. It would be doable by this fall, and and if we don't, we would have you know. Otherwise, we're going to have to really fully implement the other thing, and it's going to be more difficult to make that change. Um, that's my opinion. That's not what I heard. But, but that it wouldn't be a huge overhaul. So I have been very concerned with that, and I'm like, you know what? If this isn't a priority, we don't do this. But, but this married so many problems that we already have. Too long of board meetings, um, not enough data, um, you know, not not getting all of the data that we want and, and having all of these lengths of time, boom, corrects all of these problems and actually makes it more succinct and, and not that much more work because it combines it into one neat package. I guess, so I guess what I'd like to see as one of the five board members here is if we decide that this is good, that this in theory is good, I'd want to see board leadership, district leadership, talk to the principals and have someone raise their hand from a school and say, okay, yeah, I'll be the game. I'll put one together. They put the presentation together and or some notes, and we as a board look at it in a study session. We go through it. We say, is this the data we want? No, okay, go. It's like back to the drawing board several times. And then after that, then we can define if we want a 65-minute meeting, you know, every month from one school, if we want to do what we're saying about breaking it up. But I think we need to define what we want to see and think about as a board how much time it really takes and how we want to break this up and when we want to do it. But to ask us to do it now, it's like, I, I feel like I'd, I would want to see this and go through a kind of a work process before we decide what it's going to look like and what we're committing to. So Because that's kind of what we've already seen. You know, we had our, our report from a school or two and we, we realized, well, we want to see this and we want to see this and we don't want different data from every single well, school. So, so yeah, we already had kind it's of a just guinea be pig. A place. It, we've already had kind of a guinea pig experience with that. Yeah. So you're correct. At the difference that we could possibly do is we didn't really have input on what was presented to us. So, so perhaps um, pulling that information together or pulling past board meetings, because we've had very specific things on what data we want to see. And, and kind of putting that in an outline and saying, hey, is this what we want to see? Is this what we want to hear? 
And yeah, maybe That's having a school ambitious presenter. ambitious principal could take, I think, this so. sheet right here. And, or you could get an example from, from, from Everett Public Schools and give it to an ambitious principal and they could come up with an example presentation and then we as a board could look at it and, and kind of have some work set study sessions before we make a decision that, yes, this is much better than what we're already doing. We need to kind of see a product and talk about it. Yeah. The one thing is we never even got that with our current thing and it's barely started. So perhaps if we decide to go with our current way, perhaps we should take that, that road with both. Does yeah. that make sense? So I think the, pe the piece that I would like to clarify with Everett Public Schools is the way I perceive this is this is their school improvement meeting that the board is invited to. This was not something that the board defined and asked the principals to do. So I think I would like to clarify with Everett what was the initial intent and then and, and close that loop because what you guys are talking about I think is different than what this intention was. You, this intention was we do this as a reflective opportunity as a team and we create this based on our school improvement planning goals and our school improvement planning indicators as a leadership team and hey board we would love to share this with you what you're talking about in terms of defining it and telling the principal they're going to do it this way is a different message. No, you can define it and show us one of these presentations and then we don't, need, we, we don't even have to give the input, but at least so we can say, do we want to go sit through 65 minutes of this? Or sure. do we want to get it in a presentation format? Okay, or I'm or sorry, I, I misunderstood. I thought you were saying I'm you saying, wanted to have a board no, dialogue around your, defining it. No, your staff defines it by putting together an example. We as a board take that example and define as a board how we want to receive the information. Do we want 65 minute meetings that we're required to go to at the school? Do we want one of these every study session for 15 minutes? But you define what it is, but I'm saying we need that example to define how we want to go about the work process to receive the information. Thanks for the clarification. One thing I would like to point out that Vanessa pointed out to me is that the setup of this meeting or agenda is similar to how we set up superintendent um, student council. So some of the people in this room, Mr. Nunnemaker, Ms. Hall, uh, Ms. Phillips have came in and dropped in on our meetings and I think that um, them being there was more and I'm speaking for them I'm not sure but um, was more influential than if we had typed up everything we said and presented to it to them because I just think it was different so okay so Mrs. Phillips do you um have a well Mrs. Whitney do you or Superintendent Whitney did, um, if we did that, one of my parts, I, because I think it's great if they want to determine what, what is shown at those, but at the same time, we want like um, data that is the same at every elementary school. They can still do that, get together as teams and decide, okay, great. So we've spent nearly an hour discussing this. So that it hasn't been a futile discussion, what are we doing going forward? Do we want to uh, bring this back at another session with additional information? Are we saying, look, we're done, we don't want to do this, that we're going to make an effort to improve what we're currently doing, or? I agree with, with Mr. Lehrman, you know, let's follow through, let Miss Whitney follow up with principals, see what, you know, if this fits into them, get the feedback from Everett. And I would like to see before implementing something like this, two to three examples, like that we would, if we had three, then we could, two board members could, one or two could go to each of those, see how it works before we say, okay, we want the whole district to do this. We're all committing to do this. I think it's reasonable if we already have schools planning reports over the next two months, let's just pick three and actually see a process and then decide, okay, do we want to implement this next year? Okay. I don't. So we'll, we will uh, get that information and we'll put this on a future agenda and limit it to 15 minutes of discussion. How does that sound? And I'd love to start with one. I think it's going to be an intense thing for that first ask. And so having well, three is going to be. Well, the, one, the only thing is only two people would be able to go to it. So three of us would not have gone and participated in one of the sessions if, oh, it's, if you yeah. only have one. So you'd have to have three so that we could all go to a session and get the experience. Or we can make it a public right. meeting and do or you one. Can make it a public meeting and like have one the same thing. and have all five of us there and mm -hmm. invite the public to it. 
and maybe we at a study session when things settle down whenever that is we could do it during a study session and we'll, we'll set a clock and just do it right there thank you miss phillips for the effort to bring this to us and present it to us okay so i think does anybody in the audience want to chime in on this <laughs> seeing no takers we will close that opportunity so so this is what we have talked about when we've changed our format is having this opportunity to dialogue more on things like this that are topics that are of interest to us as a board and not feel so constrained by time although i'm not sure that's all good it's it's only 8 10. I, oh well yeah <laughs> so that concludes our extended study uh, discussion portion so now we get to the por part where we're going to talk about future agenda items and during this part I, I know there's been several things that we have a board has talked about that we would like to discuss so we will let mrs. Whitney talk about what is on our future agenda and then this is where we get an opportunity to chime in if there's something that we would like to have on another agenda for a discussion like we've just had perfect so as um kind of as a holdover from the way that we've determined future agenda items before the current agenda for the 24th is defined um mrs or uh, dr ray has talked about the capital facilities plan would be part of the study session and then also the board discussion around any input they want to have in boundary parameters um, we tentatively have reports during the board meeting scheduled on nutrition services there would be a real meal price recommendation for 1819 and uh, mark garrett has some information he would like to share on some study that the district has done on a one-to-one -one laptop take-home initiative um, specifically i believe starting with the middle school um, so at this time um, as president christensen just talked about i'm also prepared to collect any future agenda items for consideration right yes board members anything that you're that, that you want to have a discussion on i know dr richardson yep small high school like delta okay. another one so we will put that on uh we'll make a note of that so one other thing that i wanted to talk about anybody else scott is there anything that uh, yeah um President Christensen and I kind of discussed on the phone uh, having another discussion on equity and what equity means to the board and what it means to the district um, and to revisit that conversation that we started six months ago or so and, and talk about if there's a path forward that, that we'd like to follow up with on that. The capital facilities plan, is that the security one? No. No? Maybe that's something we could add the results from the company that we gave all the data to or something like that. Yeah, we probably need to schedule a, a report on that. That probably wouldn't be the discussion like we've just had, but that would we definitely need to get that on our schedule. So one of the things, fellow board members, is so now is the time to be submitting WASDA legislative priorities. And if there are not, uh, not priorities, um, recommendations proposals basically for next legislative session and one of the things that we that i've talked about with our legislative liaison um, marie sullivan is potentially getting together with other school districts who did not who qualified for the k3 grant but did not get it there's about 20 to 25 other districts and talking about what that might look like so legislative priorities and with that potentially being one of them would be one that i think would be we would want to have fairly soon if not next board meeting at least in one of the future board meetings not too distant i had a couple more um one was i, I spoke with miss thornton on and maybe she's already done the research and ready to talk to us about it but the uh, legislative uh differences or action that that happened with respect to 
district voting and, uh, for school boards and if it's changed whether or not we have to take that to the public or if the board can make a decision. And then uh, I said equity. When I talked equity, I was talking equity in programs. But <coughs> Ms. Uh, Whitney alluded to another conversation that I had with her um, on the phone about talking about Hallmark experiences for different grade levels in uh, making equitable Hallmark experiences. I don't know what those are. It'd be up to the district staff to define them so that kids in different grades across the district have the same, I don't know if they're field trips or what you want to call them, but what do we think is important as a district so that different schools get some, uh, mostly the same types of, of experiences and we don't have um, haves and have nots with those, those kind of uh, experiences. Okay, any others? All right, so that concludes that, and we have saved the best for last, or almost last, I think. Communications. Board members, Mr. Lehrman, do you want to start? Pass. Pass. I'll just share briefly that this month, the last Ready for Kindergarten sessions are occurring. So I've uh, went to the one in the fall and the winter. And so this is the last opportunity for the third session for those. So you can sign up for that. Uh, there's some in English and some in Spanish. So hopefully we get a good turnout this month. Uh, this past few weeks, I actually got to attend Enterprise. And it was a great experience just being able to work with other students from uh, Chihuahua and New Horizons. And my firm did get second place on our division, which was pretty exciting. Um, also at Pasco High this week, we began um, a lesson in our, our advisory about um, threads and um, just telling students like how to define one. And we did take a small quiz on just um, like how when to consider a thread and just kind of what the student thought. And then we gave them the the real answer and with um, legal description of why it's that. This week, um, and I think next week, we're doing SBAC testing at Chihuahua. Um, our dance team did make it to state. They did not place Pasco High's dance team place, so congratulations to them, but they both did a very good job. Ne this Friday, I believe 80 students, Japanese students, um, will be here arriving to Chihuahua, so we're very excited for that. Um, a plug for Miss Sessions, if you do have an available home, <laughs> we're still looking for homes. Um, we are going into our to our prom um, spirit week and she wanted students are excited for that so be on the lookout you'll see a lot of spirit I'll pass so as was reported the uh, we two weeks ago the week before spring break was our enterprise week and I'm I'm sure we're gonna get a report on that is that correct so Okay, yeah, it looks like we're going to get a report on that. So um, I went, Senator Murray there was there. She came and spent uh, a few minutes there with the students. And I don't know if these students were hand-picked, but I think four of the five students or five of the six students there wanted to be teachers. So it was, uh, I don't know if that's representative of all, of all of our students, but it was interesting that there was that many that wanted to be teachers and I think represented us very well. So I think we can be proud of our students and um, just to thank you to those community members and staff who made that event, event successful. It was a change of venue, a little bit of a change of format, I believe, and, uh, but, but the reports are that it was very successful. So thank you to those who did that. I, I just also wanted to add on CBC partnered with us in allowing us to use that location because it was CBC spring break. Um, so that partnership was really, really incredible and, and really amazing. And Country Gentleman, I believe, did all of the food and, and all of it to my knowledge or to my knowledge, if not most of it was donated. So it definitely was a Herculean effort with hundreds of volunteers and 
um, our, our kids are impressive and, and they're inspiring. And so it was a, it was a great event. I also just wanted to acknowledge, a, um, Isabel is not here. She was excused this evening as she was playing in a softball game. She hit a home run on Friday night, um, right before spring break. So I want to acknowledge that. And um, she has been officially named the valedictorian for Delta High School. So she's hitting a home run on the field and in academics. So I just wanted to acknowledge her this evening, even though she's not here. One last thing, sorry. Um, I just want to acknowledge the people at Chia Juana. I don't feel so bad that I don't know the specific people, but that we have every 15 minutes going on this Friday, which I'm looking very forward to. Um, it's a very moving program. It's the mock car crash with the paramedics and the morgue, and you don't come home to your parents that night and they get the call that your student has, well, your son or daughter has been killed in a car accident. And it's very moving. And the people who put that on at our school, I want to say congratulations and thank you for that because we do have prom coming up, and it is an extra reminder to be careful. So. Okay, that concludes our agenda. We do not have an executive session tonight. So uh, with that, we are adjourned.